Hey, what's up guys, it's Darius, and this is the brand new OnePlus Nord 2. On paper, it seems like amazing value for 400 bucks. In this video though, I wanna test the battery life and the charging speed as they both been improved. Compared to its predecessor, it now has a larger battery capacity and it comes with faster charging. So I'm definitely excited to test that out. Now to compare, I brought in some of its best competition, the more expensive OnePlus 9, its predecessor, the OnePlus Nord, the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G, and the Poco F3. Now before we jump right in, let me quickly tell you about this video sponsor, Dr. Phone by Wondershare. If you've ever tried to switch between Android and iOS, you know what a pain that can be. Dr. Phone makes this process seamless. You can backup, restore, and transfer your WhatsApp data, including all media, with just one click. So if you're looking to switch between iOS and Android, try Dr. Phone for free using the link below. They're all on the same Wi-Fi network with Bluetooth and location enabled, and I've matched the brightness to around a thousand lux. But as always, let's jump right in with YouTube. In terms of battery capacity, the Nord 2 has now been bumped up to 4,500 milliamp hours, an increase of the original Nord, which only had 4,115 milliamp hours. All the other devices that we're testing here today also have 4,500 milliamp hours, and the Poco F3 has 4,520 milliamp hours. After one hour of YouTube, there's already a small difference between the battery lives. We have 98% on the A52 and on the F3. The original Nord and the OnePlus 9 have 95% and the Nord 2 sadly is actually in last place with 94% remaining. We're now going to move on to some 4K video recording. Now in terms of the displays, there's actually no difference when it comes to resolution. All of them have 1080p AMOLED panels. The differences are the screen size and the screen refresh rate. The Nord 2 actually has the smallest display out of all of them at 6.43 inches. The original Nord, weirdly enough, has 6.44 inches, even though they're actually the same display. The A52 5G has a 6.5 inch screen. The OnePlus 9 has a 6.55 inch screen. And the Poco F3 actually has the largest screen at 6.67 inches. We're two hours in and the Nord 2 definitely isn't doing well. It only has 70% remaining while the others are definitely doing much better even still have 80 percent on the poco f3 and the rest are kind of in the middle we're now going to move on to some web browsing i've set it to 30 second intervals and it auto refreshes a web page like i said a major difference is also the refresh rate the poco the samsung and the oneplus 9 actually have a 120 hertz display while the nord and the nord 2 only have 90 hertz panels now keep in mind, if you do want to get more battery out of all these devices than the test will show, you can just always bump it down to 60 Hz. We're three hours in and the Nord 2 actually caught up a little. It now has 62% remaining, 63 on the Nord 1, 64 on the OnePlus 9, 65 on the A52 5G and a whopping 72% on the Poco F3, which is doing very well. We're now actually going to do a little standby test. In this case, it was actually eight hours. And the results are very surprising. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Surprisingly, the Poco F3 did the worst, losing 5% in just 8 hours of standby, which is quite a lot. Both the original Nord and the OnePlus 9 lost 4%, which isn't that good either. The Samsung did very well, losing only 1%, and the Nord 2 for some reason, didn't lose a single percent. I don't think I've ever seen that before. All the devices I've tested before at least lost 1%. So that's very impressive. And it's the next morning, so we obviously have to join a Zoom meeting now, which to keep it all fair is hosted on a separate device. Now, one thing that's definitely very interesting and will have a big impact on the battery life is the chip it's using because all of these devices are using a Snapdragon chip, except for the Nord 2, which now uses a MediaTek processor, which is a first for OnePlus. You have a Snapdragon 750G on the Samsung, a 765G on the OnePlus Nord, an 870 on the F3, and a Snapdragon 888 on the OnePlus 9. The Nord 2, however, uses a Dimensity 1200. I've never heard of it, but I'm definitely very curious to see how it affects the battery life. The results after our one hour meeting are quite interesting. The Poco F3 and the Nord 2 did equally as well, both losing 15%, but the Poco is definitely still in the lead with 52%. The Samsung did pretty well as well, still 1% ahead of the Nord 2, but the OnePlus 9 and especially the original Nord did not do well. It only has 38% remaining. Now we're gonna move on to some Instagram reels. 
We're five hours in and the Nord 2 is actually catching up to the Poco F3 with now only a 2% difference and it also narrowly surpassed the Samsung. The OnePlus 9 still has 35% remaining and the original Nord only 29%. We're gonna move on to some light gaming with Subway Surfers and we'll play that for another hour. After that round, the Poco F3 actually did a little better now. It now regained its 5% lead over the Nord 2 with 32% remaining. The OnePlus 9 actually surpassed the Samsung now with 25% and the original Nord is definitely not doing well with only 15% remaining. Now you could see in this gaming round that the higher end Snapdragon chips definitely did a lot better than the lower end Snapdragon chips and the MediaTek on the Nord 2. We're now actually gonna run a few benchmarks starting with Geekbench 5. And in terms of the Snapdragon chips, there's no major surprises. The Snapdragon 888 on the OnePlus 9 came in ahead, which was to be expected. The Snapdragon 870 on the F3 in second place. And as you can see, the MediaTek on the Nord 2 definitely did very well. It's still a little behind the higher end Snapdragon chips, but it's a massive improvement over the original Nord. Now we're also going to test the graphics performance. And here the results are very shocking. The MediaTek chip on the Nord 2 actually won, beating out the Snapdragon 888. You have to keep in mind, that's a chip that is featured in a lot of high-end flagship that cost thousand bucks. Now after that, we're gonna run the 3D Mark benchmark. And here the Snapdragon 888 definitely beat out the MediaTek chip, but it is on par with the Snapdragon 870. And again, a massive improvement over the original Nord. The benchmark round drained the battery on all of them about four to five percent and now we're gonna move on to some netflix we're way past the seven hour mark and we're now in the home stretch the original nord is about to die with only three percent remaining the samsung still has 11 percent then one plus nine 13 percent 16 percent on the nord 2 which is doing pretty well considering in the beginning of the test the first couple of rounds it was losing and the f3 is still ahead with 21 percent remaining we're now gonna move on to some tiktok and after seven hours and 48 minutes, the original OnePlus Nord died. It is a decent result, but nothing incredible. I'm very curious to see how long the Nord 2 will still last. Now just past the eight hour mark, the A52 5G died. A respectable result, but nothing too impressive. We're now gonna move on to some live streaming. And after eight hours and 43 minutes, the OnePlus 9 died which is a pretty good result, but it is the most expensive out of all of them. It shows that spending more money on a device will not necessarily give you better battery life. And after eight hours and 51 minutes, the Nord 2 died. That is a great result, very impressive and a massive improvement over the original Nord. It lasted an entire hour longer. So I'm very pleased with that result. The Poco F3 is still going somehow though. It's the battery champ for sure. I'm just gonna speed up the rest. And after nine hours and 18 minutes, it also finally died. Very, very impressive stuff here. Now that they've all run out of battery, we're gonna do a charging test. Here the Samsung is the worst, at least on paper. It only supports 25 watts fast charging. That's actually my bad because the first few minutes I didn't actually use a 25 watt fast charger on the Samsung. I used the charger that comes in the box with all of them and the Samsung is actually the only one that doesn't come with a fast charger in the box at its maximum supported wattage. So it only comes with a 15 watt fast charger which I only realized a few minutes into the test and then I swapped to a 25 watt fast charger from Samsung. The original Nord supports 30 watts fast charging, the Poco F3 33 watts and the OnePlus 9 and now also the Nord 2 support 65 watt fast charging which is incredibly impressive given the price of the OnePlus Nord 2. And keep in mind that fast charger is included in the box. I love to see that. After 15 minutes you can already see the differences. The Samsung only charged 21%, 34% on the Poco F3, 38% on the OnePlus Nord, 49% on the OnePlus 9, and a whopping 62% on the Nord 2. After half an hour, the Nord 2 is already fully charged, which is very, very impressive. The OnePlus 9 is at 93%, 69% on the Nord, 64% on the F3, and only 43% on the Samsung. Seven minutes later, the OnePlus 9 is also fully charged. Again, that could be a slight error, but nonetheless, it's still very fast. 
The Nord and the F3 reached 100% almost at the same time. It took 53 minutes on the Nord and 55 minutes on the Poco F3. Nothing too impressive, but not bad either. The Samsung is still not doing well with only 80% charge and it took a whopping 1 hour and 27 minutes to charge the Samsung. But what do you guys think of these results? I personally was very impressed with the Nord 2, the battery life and the charging speed. I have more videos on the Nord 2 coming up, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss those. Make sure to smash the like button and comment down below what other videos you'd like to see on the new Nord 2. And I'll see you guys in the next one.